हेलो फ्रेंड्स सुबह के साढ़े पाँच बज चुके हैं और हम लाइव आ चुके हैं आज के पेपर के हम लोग आज का पेपर पढ़ना है स्टार्ट करते हैं यदि आप लोग चैनल पर नए हैं तो चैनल को सब्सक्राइब कर दीजिएगा और बेल आइकन को प्रेस कर दीजिएगा क्योंकि पर डे हम लोग इसी टाइम पर न्यूज़ पेपर लेकर आते हैं ओवर टू पॉइंट टू लाख केसेस इन लास्ट ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स टी पी आर टिकल टू फोर पॉइंट टू परसेंट ओवर एट लाख मिग्रेंट वर्कर्स लेफ्ट दिल्ली दिल्ली ऑन स्टेट रन बर्ड से गुजरात इमरजेज एज ए हॉट स्पॉट फॉर मिग्रो माइकोसिस इन इंडिया यानी गुजरात में ए टोटल ऑफ टू थाउजेंड टू हंड्रेड एटी वन केसेज रिपोर्टेड द हाइस्ट अमाउंग ऑफ ऑल स्टूडेंट ऑल स्टेट्स मतलब गुजरात में सबसे ज़्यादा माइक्रोमाइसिस का केस मिला है नेपाल हाउस टीजल रिपोल इन नाउ बंगाल पॉलिटिक्स कॉम्स फुल सर्कल सेकेंड वेब सीज फिफ्टी वन पेशेंट बींग एडमिटेड एवरी आवर तो इसको थोड़ा हम लोग डीपली देखना चाहेंगे सेकेंड वेब सीज फिफ्टी वन पेशेंट्स बींग एडमिटेड एवरी आवर मोर पीपल डिस्चार्ज दैन एडमिटेड इन पास्ट वीक मे मार्क वेनिंग ऑफ सर्ज जितिन आनंद न्यू डेली An average of 51 COVID-19 patients were being admitted to hospitals every hour as the second wave wreaked havoc across the city during a 50-day period between April 1st and May 20th, according to government records. Delhi government records related to the admission and discharge of COVID-19 patients state that 61,916 patients were admitted to city hospitals in this period, a daily average of over 1,238 patients per day. The total number of hospital beds in the city went from 6,032 to 24,424 during this. As the second wave stretched Delhi's healthcare infrastructure to its limits, something which Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal has conceded on more than one occasion, the virus claimed 11,000 between April 1st and May 20th, which is an increase of over 165 percent compared to the 159 COVID-19 deaths during the same 50-day interval in 2020. Around 867 patients were discharged per day, or 36 per hour, bringing the total number of those who recovered from hospitals to 43,384. According to government records, there were 294 hospital admissions on April 1st. As the second wave picked up pace. The figure peaked at 1,993 on April 29th, when the total number of hospital beds in the city stood at 21,152. COVID-19 from April the 1st to the 12th, during which time a total of 932 admissions took place. On April 13th, the hospitals reported 1,002. For the next 33 days, admissions remained above 1,000. Before slipping to 952 on May 16th, charged from hospitals was less compared to admissions for the first 20 days of April. The lowest number of single-day discharges from was recorded on April 4th, during which they remained in the triple digits even as admissions continued to soar. In fact, only in mid-May, with 1,384 patients leaving hospitals on May 13th, they have been consistently going down since. This peak in patients being discharged, according to records, also marked the first time during the 50-day period that the number of patients being released overtook the number of those being admitted. 1,384 discharges were recorded against 1,360. Then, more patients are being discharged from city hospitals compared to admissions almost every day. A Delhi government source said this indicated that the situation was getting better and that the second wave was retreating. On May 14th, 
First, 331 patients were discharged against 1,256 admissions. The figures stood at 1,379 and 1,052 on May 15, 1,079 and 952 on May 16, 895 and 914 on May 17, 1,326 and 806 on May 18, 1,090 and 731 78 and 560 on May 20. Yeah, अप्रैल 1 टू मई 20 में 61916 पूरा केसेस आया है एडमिशन एट सिटी हॉस्पिटल दैट इज 1230 1238 पर डे 51 एवरी आवर्स मतलब एक घंटा में एक आवर तब जिसमें से 43384 पर पेशेंट डिस्चार्ज है दैट इज 867 पर एवरी आवर्स और 11,552 कोविड डेथ इन सेम 50 डे पीरियड दी 159 डेथ्स वर रिपोर्टेड ये कुछ शाकड़ा था जी दिल्ली के था डी इश्यू रूल फॉर ओबी टू हेल्ड होल्ड फ्रॉम जून DU issues rules for OBE to be held from June 7. Staff reporter New Delhi. After deferring examination, the university has issued guidelines on the open book examinations to be held from June 7. Answer scripts that are not submitted on the OBE portal will not be accepted. Those facing internet connectivity will be permitted to email answer scripts to the nodal officer, provided that documentary evidence of the same is attached along with the answer scripts. In a notification dated May 21, the university said, in case of poor internet connectivity, the student is advised to submit his or her script beyond the specified period with the documentary evidence to the email ID of the nodal officers of the college or department. The maximum time limit for delayed submission is 30 minutes, and documentary evidence of non-submission on the portal must be attached. All such cases where students submit via email, will be examined by a review evaluated based on the decision of the panel. Results of such students may be delayed. The duration of the OBE will be 4 hours to students for answering the questions and the remaining 1 hour can be utilized for downloading the question papers and scanning and uploading answer scripts, the university said. If I are loaded with a former AMU student, over to you. FIR lodged against former AMU student over tweets. Staff reporter New Delhi. A non-cognizable FIR was registered against former Aliga Muslim University, AMU, student Shaji Losmani for allegedly posting objectionable tweets, the police said on Saturday. Police station received a complaint by BJP media head Naveen Kumar that Mr. Osmani's tweets for news anchor were defamatory religious sentiments. Source under Section 505, Statements Conducing to Public Mischief, of the Indian Penal Code was registered on May 20 and further investigation will be conducted according to law. An FIR was also lodged against Mr. Osmani in Maharashtra's Jilnar district following his recent tweets. He was charged under Section 295A, Malicious Act Outraging C and the Information Technology Act on the complaint of a Hindu Jagran Minch member. Earlier this year, IPC Section 153, a, promoting enmity between different groups on the ground religion, etc., over his speech made during the Elgar Parishad conclave held there on January 30th.
found the signals gen generalization script in Kerala. Jagan Jagan Riga I'm trying to silence this and Nado. AC auth Elega is brought due to brought to by brought to by some inspector in Karnataka. आज इंग्लिश इंग्लिश टेस्ट से जी राजस्थान कांग्रेस से मिले वे द टेस्ट अटैक ऑन शुगर कैन ड्रॉप्स शुगर कैन ड्रॉप्स इन यूपी More bodies recovered from in Ken Baje under the water shots on nine nine missing crew. Six more bodies recovered from sunken barge underwater search on for nine missing crew, then Kapiri, New Delhi. Six more bodies were recovered from the sunken barge P305 off Mumbai coast on Saturday, taking the toll death toll to 66, while nine crew are still missing even as the Navy deployed wing teams for underwater search. On the eastern coast, the Navy and Coast Guard augmented preventive measures for cyclonic storm Yas expected to form in the next 24 hours. Search and rescue operations continue for the remaining crew. Underwater search for the wrecks of barge P305 and Tugwaraprad are using specialized teams and equipment is in progress, the Navy spokesperson said. Specialized diving teams on board survey vessel INS Mecca with sonar and INS Tarasa sailed out early on Saturday morning from Mumbai for carrying out the underwater search, he stated. So far, 186 crew have been rescued and 49 bodies have been recovered from barge P305 which sank 35 nautical miles off Mumbai Road on May 17 due to Cyclone Tokti. As the low sea is likely to intensify as cyclonic storm Yas during the next 24 hours over the Bay of Bengal, moving in a northwesterly direction and likely to cross the coast between North Orisha and West Bengal around May 26, the Navy said it was closely monitoring the movement of the cyclonic storm. Eastern Naval Command and naval officers in charge at the West Bengal and Orisha area have carried out preparatory activities to combat the effects of Cyclone Yas, and are in constant liaison with the state administrations for rendering assistance as required, the spokesperson said. As part of the preparedness, eight flood relief teams and four diving teams were prepositioned at Orisha and West Bengal to augment the existing resources. Four naval ships are on standby with humanitarian assistance and disaster relief blocks, diving, and medical teams to render assistance in the most affected areas along the Orisha and West Bengal coast, he stated. stated. Naval aircraft are kept ready at naval air stations, INS Dega at Vishakhapatnam and INS Rajali near Chennai to undertake aerial survey of the most affected areas, casualty evacuation, and airdrop of relief material as required, the Navy added.
Coast Guard ships aircraft and remote operating stations continue to relay warning for mariners and fishermen in the Bay of Bengal. Coast Guard pollution and disaster response teams are on standby. Also maintaining close liaison with shipping, fisheries, oil handling agencies and state authorities, the Coast Guard said. Over 2 lakh new COVID cases in 24 hours. Getting MNS Kudnik dodges to be on tap by August. Majority marks in RS to remain elusive for BJP. Majority mark in RS to remain elusive for BJP. Party's performance in the Uttar Pradesh Assembly poll next year is crucial to maintain its current tally. Shobna Kena your New Delhi. The majority mark in the Raj Chiyasibhar will remain elusive for the BJP in the second term of the Narendra Modi government, and its performance in the Uttar Pradesh Assembly poll slated for early next year is crucial for it to maintain its current tally in the upper house. At 93, the BJP is 30 members short of the majority mark of 123 in a house of 245 MPs. In the second term, with more than half a dozen opposition MPs changing loyalty to the BJP, the ruling party had managed to pass controversial bills, beginning with the Muslim Women, Protection of Rights of Marriage, Bill, 2019 or Triple to Law A Organization Bill and the Citizen. Three rounds of retirements in the year 2022, April, 18 members, June, 20 members, and July, 33 members will bring the last change in the political arithmetic of the Raj Sabha in the second term of the Modi government. Impending losses will come from Andhra Pradesh, Rajasthan, and Chhattisgarh. The BJP holds three out of the four seats that go to the polls in Andhra Pradesh after four TDP MPs join the BJP in June 2019. These three seats will go to the ruling party YSR Congress. In Rajasthan, too where the BJP holds all the four seats that fall vacant in July 2022, the Congress has an opportunity. Dissension is already brewing in the state, with Congress leader Sachin Pilot once again raising the flag of rebellion. If the Congress is able to maintain order in its house, it could gain three seats in the Raj Sabha. In Chhattisgarh, the BJP will lose one seat in the Raj Sabha elections slated for June next year. The BJP will gain one seat each in Assam and Himachal Pradesh next June. This makes Uttar Pradesh crucial for the BJP's strength in the upper house. In July Nek Pradesh will fall vacant. As per the current tally, the BJP holds five of these, which includes two former Samajwadi Party MPs, Sinjay Zait and Surinder Singh Nigar, who shifted their loyalties midway through their term. Without repeating its 2017 performance in the state. The BJP cannot hold on to these five seats. In Punjab, if the cause of the three controversial farm laws prevails still the polls, the BJP will lose one seat. The BJP allies will also be affected. The AIADMK strength is expected to be curtailed after its defeat in the recent assembly poll in Tamil Nadu. Currently, the AIADMK has six members and its political adversary, the DMK, Sevens from the state that are currently vacant are expected to go to the polls any time soon. The DMK will win two of these three. In June next year, four upper house seats from the state go to the polls. Out of these four, currently the DMK and the AIADMK have two each. DMK insiders sounded confident that they will easily win three of these. On the balance, the DMK is expected to go into double digits, outstripping the AIADMK. There will be no significant change in the current Congress expected to make gains in Rajasthan, 3, and Chhattisgarh, 1, on the basis of A's. It will lose one seat each from Assam, Karnataka AA, and Himachal Pradesh. In Assam, two seats are falling vacant in April next year, 
including that of the current state unit president Ripun Borar. Out of these two, out of these two, the Congress can hope to retain one. There is no barrier for Ashland to foray into robot. Age, no barrier for students to foray into robotics. It is not just fun but a necessity, point out experts. Madhwanti S. Krishnan, Chennai. The SRM Institute of SIST, in association with the Hindu, hosted two webinars yesterday, as part of the SRM Virtual Conclave for Career Guidance 2021. The first, A Career in Robotics, Current Trends and Future Prospects, was moderated by Arning the session. Professor Sanjay Goyal, Director, Institute of Engineering and Technology, Jigar, pointed out that robotics is not just fun, but a necessity. We have a larger population that needs a better quality of life want to be globally competitive and rare technology, he said, adding that robotics is becoming relevant in fields such as farming, healthcare, and education. Snehar Priya, co-founder and CEO, SP robot the field and said that there was no age barrier for students to take the plunge. Children of 12 years can be taught a mix of the mechanical, electronic, and program kids to robotics, AI, virtual reality, and programming to not only help them master their field of interest but also choose it. One of the preferred ways of learning robotics is through mechatronics engineering, which is an interdisciplinary and concurrent approach of designing systems said R. St. Ilnatan, Associate Professor, Department of Mechatronics Engineering, SRMIST. He advised students who wanted to study robotics to look for institutes with laboratory infrastructure, faculty who are roboticists, interdisciplinary curriculum that emphasized lab practice, student-driven robotics club, participation in competitions, and entrepreneurship incubation facilities among others. The second session on challenges for entrepreneurship in the new normal, moderated by Yashas Vinirajeshwar, discussed upcoming trends and opportunities. Siddharth Chaturvedi, Executive VP, ISECT Group, emphasized the importance of teaching entrepreneurship in school, as it helps hone collaborative and public speaking skills, collect and analyze data, use social media as an advocacy tool, and solve complex problems that don't have a definitive answer. Promote entrepreneurship culture in and around the campus by providing multiple platforms to budding entrepreneurs to improve upon their business models and be mentored by successful entrepreneurs, he urged. Drawing from his own experiences, Hari Krishnan Naya, co founder, Great Learning, stressed that this was the age of opportunity. Entrepreneurship is a marathon, not a sprint. There are no shortcuts and overnight successes. You cannot do it by yourself. Teams build great companies, not individuals. Apart from family, friends, look for existing support ecosystems such as technology cells, incubation centers. Anand Kumar, VP, SRM Innovation and Incubation Center, emphasized that failure was an integral part of entrepreneurship. Despite the many stories of school dropouts making it big, he said that formal education was important. Whether learning happens online or offline, it will help reduce assumptions about the field. Take systematic steps with well-defined processes. Be open to asking for help to address concerns. Asking for help to address concerns, he advised. Both sessions ended with speakers taking questions from the audience. Those who missed the webinars can view them at https colon slash slash bitly slash turksvims and https colon slash slash bitly slash two Music Director Ram Lakshman passes away. Pandemic hit UPSC aspirant seek one more chance.
pandemic hit UPSC aspirants seek one more chance. Two groups of age barred candidates approach Supreme Court for relief. Krishna Das Raj Gopal New Delhi Civil services aspirants, whose final attempt at the elite exams in 2020 was affected by the pandemic, have approached the Supreme Court again for a chance this year, citing the most exceptional circumstances. Two categories of UPSC aspirants have moved the apex court separately. The first are candidates who were unable to take their final attempt on October 4, 2020 due to the COVID-19 situation and lockdown. The exam was scheduled to happen on October 4, 2020. However, on the day of exam they were directly or indirectly affected by COVID-19 pandemic. Hence, on account of the restrictive protocols and guidelines given by the state, which included mandatory quarantine, etc., the petitioners were unable to appear in the exam and take their last attempt. Writ petitions filed by these aspirants, represented by advocate Summer Vijay Singh, said. A bench led by Justice A. M. Khan Wilker, on April 19, had asked these petitioners to serve an advance copy of their pleas to the government side through the central agency of the Apex Court. The second group are aspirants, represented by advocate Ashutosh Khare, who managed to take the exam on October 4. In an intervention application before the Apex Court, they submitted that their preparation and final attempt at the exam in 2020 was severely affected by the pandemic. The four applicants led by Dr. Vishnu Shawaji Bulbule, a medical doctor based in Pune, said they had taken the civil services exam even as they worked in the front lines of the pandemic as corona warriors. The applicants sought parity with others who had not attempted the exam last year. They said they took they said they took the exam in a peculiar situation while suffering from the mental and physical trauma and pain caused by what it was also crippled by the lack of study material, infrastructure and loss of income. They said while most aspirants had the luxury of another chance at the civil services exam and could afford to miss the 2021, last attempters, who had dreamed of joining the services to serve the country, were compelled to risk their health during the pandemic and take the exam on October 4. They have sought an extra attempt in addition to their permissible attempts, so as to enable them to appear in the Civil Services Examination, CSE, for the year 2021-2022. The aspirants have highlighted how the Supreme Court in an order on September 30 last year had asked the government to consider giving the last attempters of 2020, who would be age-barred in 2021, a one-time age relaxation for appearing in CSE 2021. They said the government and UPSC had not taken the suggestion favorably. Government cannot seek a removal of Twitter tag experts. Abhi hum log news ko sirf ye jo bhi topic yani. ध्यान देने लायक है करंट अफेयर्स लायक है तो उसको सेपरेट वीडियो कट के इसी चैनल पर डाल देंगे ये अभी देखने पर बहुत ज्यादा टाइम लग जाएगा सेंटर गिविंग प्रायोरिटी ऑफ द जॉब 45 वाले डिजिटल मीडिया टोल टू रिमूव मेंशन ऑफ इंडिया इंडियन वेरिएंट आई ऑफ ब्लैक फंगस मेडिसिंस एम्स पटना डॉक्टर्स थ्रेटन टू गो टू अ स्ट्राइक फॉर Tomorrow, negative report is not the end of problem, doctors. Play in AC for vaccine passage re revival to ramp up COVID-19 nation. Here India data breach may cause legal list risk. Nara Siman Math Scientist is no more. Whether on COVID webinar on COVID nineteen and children or not my twenty four Simhan, Math Scientist.
to if a one religious adopted ONGC imply in Nagaland what suggests up to face cyclonias Orisha gears up to face cyclone Yas. CM stresses on need to maintain COVID protocols. Special correspondent Bhuvaneshwar. Orisha is gearing up to deploy 66 units of the State Disaster Rapid Action Force, 22 units of National Disaster Response Force and 177 fire service teams as cyclone Yas is likely to hit the coast on May 26. According to the India Meteorological Department, Iria has formed over East Central Bay of Bengal on Saturday. It is very likely to concentrate into a depression over East Central Bay of Bengal by Sunday morning. The system may intensify into a cyclonic storm by May 24, Monday, and 